Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. I was reading through Twitter, it was something I wanted to talk about, <clears throat> and I'll give you my opinion on it, but uh, Lynn Alden had put a question, it says the question, <clears throat> in an imperfect world with imperfect mes metrics, is M2 or CPI the better metric between the two? CPI changes its basket of goods and hedonic offsets over the calculation period. Meanwhile, M2 is more consistent but struggles with an opaque financial situation. Uh, in, in my opinion, the better metric is M2. <clears throat> and the reason I think M2 is the better metric is because CPI is manipulated. And when you, when you think of it, the M2 money supply coming in that's your money supply, M2 money supply, will tell you what inflation is. Uh, the CPI is basically irrelevant. I wouldn't even use it for anything. Uh, it, it's a metric. It, it does not measure really anything. I mean, it measures prices that perhaps people are paying, but what does that matter? M2 is the money in the system. And that really is what the driver of anything is. So I'll, I'll go back to my engineering background. <clears throat> it, the, the difference between these two metrics is M2 is a driver and CPI is a measurement, uh, which is a lagging indicator. And it, all you're doing is measuring the symptom of something and you're measuring something that isn't even accurate. It can be adjusted however which way. So Think of it as you're going through and you're producing a product. You're producing that product and what you want to know if you're producing the product isn't the necessary costs on the back end. You want to know, and I, and I know that's an important metric and the financial guys get this wrong all the time. So I'm, I'm a lean manufacturing uh, en engineer, basically. Um, my, I studied manufacturing engineering. And what you want to do if you want to lean out a process, if you want to become more efficient, if you want to become better at producing a product, you need to know leading indicators. So a leading indicator would be your standard WIP, your, your standard work in progress. And what you could do is you could see through your facility, through visual controls in that facility, where your problems are at real time using work in progress it's your standard work in progress so you could say we have a problem here we have a problem here and you can just see it because you're supposed to have standard work in progress you could say something's missing here now the reason that metric is more important is because it gives you real-time information it says this is what the current situation is and then you know that the back end is going to have a whole bunch of problems with their calculations. So when you, when you look at this, the leading indicators is what you want to look at. M2 is a leading indicator of inflation. It just doesn't tell you where that inflation goes, but you know it exists and it's there. So if the M2 money supply goes up, you use the ratios to determine where that money has flown into. And I'll pull one up for you guys to show you what exactly happened. So I went to long-term trends, this is longtermtrends.net and anyone can, can see this. And what I'm looking at is, I'm looking where money has flown. And a ratio like stocks to real estate ratio is a ratio saying, hey look, stocks are super expensive in relationship to real estate. And why is that? Why, why would stocks be expensive in relationship to real estate? So what they did during that, that period of a, uh, a recovery phase in real estate is they printed a bunch of money, put it into the banks. And the banks, what did they do with it? They just threw it in bonds and stocks. There it is. There's your ratio. It's telling you they did that. So the, 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 the metric here is saying, hey, look, it didn't go into real estate. It, it went into stocks. And it also peaked in 1999, and then it declined. Well, guess what happened in 1999? Let me pull up another chart for you guys, and I'll show you how this all uh, ties together. 
Uh, I'm pulling up the housing starts, and what the housing starts are is the building of new homes. So the average is this black line going across, and this average is just the average new homes that are built throughout history. Whenever we go into these expansionary phases, it changes. And in 1999, which is basically in this, this expansionary phase of real estate where it started, we noticed that the rotation of money occurred. And I'm going to pull up this to show you. <clears throat> this is 1999, which is the dot-com bubble. The reason it was a bubble was because real estate went into an expansionary phase. That's inflationary, and it drags interest rates up with it. Interest rates is what's going to rotate the money out of the NASDAQ tech companies and stocks. So what, we're, what, I'm, what I'm saying is the M2 money supply is a measurement of, of, of a leading indicator that money's coming into the system. We're seeing the money enter stocks because the stock to real estate ratio is expensive. And I also know that stocks are expensive to commodities. I know that stocks are expensive to uh, other assets. It, they're the most expensive they've ever been. So all the money went into stocks. But under the, these market conditions that are coming under an expansionary phase of real estate, this changes. If you look at the 1970s, if you look at the 1999 to 2008, look at the, the data here where the 70s, you could see a decline in this ratio from 70, 60, 68 to 1980. Home real estate outperformed stocks. And 99 to 2008, it outperformed stocks. Real estate did. This ratio is going to come back down, which means real estate's going to outperform stocks. That's what it's saying in these market conditions that are coming up. Now, there's a huge implication here that people I don't think are understanding. That money was created. It didn't just poof, go to nowhere. It's in the system. The M2 money supply. And that money went into the system. It just went into stocks. Now, what I'm showing you here is that that money is going to rotate into other things. The money just didn't go poof and exist and, and, and didn't ever come into existence. It's not stuck in the banks. It exists in stocks. It exists in assets. The inflation went into assets. It didn't just go poof. When these market conditions come, and I hear a lot of analogies like the Hoover Dam through a straw or something like that, right? What I'm saying is the Pacific Ocean's coming. The money was created and it was created in copious amounts. It just went into different assets. What I am telling you or what I think is going to happen is that rotation out of those assets where all that money went, remember, it exists. If it's not in the CPI, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. The consumer price index is just looking at one little facet. It's a worthless measurement anyway. But the M2, the money came in, it went into stocks and bonds. That's going to rotate back out. And guess what? If it goes into commodities, if it goes into real estate, if it goes into all these things, what do you think the CPI is going to do? The CPI is a lagging indicator, and the CPI is going to blow up under certain market conditions. And what's happening is all that money shifted. It shifted all over there because it wasn't going to go into real estate because the housing starts, the housing market was in, a, was in a crash phase. This is the crash phase. This is a huge, this is the recession coming down. This is the recession that we had, which was driven by the deflation from real estate. This is the recession we had, which was driven by real estate coming back down. And then we had this massive recovery phase coming up back to the average, which took a very long time. All that money that they printed, and all we can even look at it here because I'm on the, the website. I'm looking for M2 uh, money supply here. And what happened, <clears throat> what happened here in 2009 is the inflation went down because we were having a crash in real estate. That crash in real estate is deflation. 
but they printed a bunch a bunch of money to counteract the the deflation and try to pull this back up and it has a little bit of a lag this printing here is this movement in the inflation rate here it's delayed behind it by a a, a year or two and then we're getting a massive increase in money supply which this is going to go berserk to the upside here and it's going to follow roughly this type of movement and it may not be the exact same because they're going to hedonically adjust it down and 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 play with the numbers but this is going to start to roll on higher but this money that was created here when it all unwinds and comes back out of of stocks when it when it unwinds and if it finds a home in commodities, what do you think the CPI is going to do? The money's in the system. It's going to rotate back out and it's going to blow the CPI prices to the upside, most likely. And what we're seeing, which is a leading indicator, is our PPI, our, our producer price index. And the producer price index is the, it, it, it basically flows through the PPI first and then to the CPI. And what we're seeing, as this as this loads here is we're seeing the ppi start to blow up and here's the the p the ppi right here so we're seeing this in these in these expansionary phases of real estate the ppi just blowing up in between and we're blowing up to the upside right here there it is we're blowing up to the upside this will work its way through the system. Now, we're seeing all our commodities with these huge patterns, like from 1980 till today, massive patterns on some of the commodities. It's all gonna work its way through. And that money's gonna rotate in this and make it that much worse. It's going to feed on itself. And when looking at this, if you're in Elliott Wave, uh, Elliott wave back here is wave one, wave three, wave five. This is a huge wave one that we're getting. And then we're going to see a little bit of a pullback, and then we're going to see another big wave three, probably. So it's coming. All this stuff is coming. All the money's in the system. And when you look at the leading indicator, M2 tells you that. Then you have to look at other metrics to see how this stuff's probably going to rotate over. The CPI, if all you look at is that as a gauge of what prices are doing, remember, they want you to look at that. That's the number that they can manipulate. They can't manipulate the M2. So my viewpoint is the M2 is more important because it's a, a more reliable indicator and it's, it, and it's a leading indicator of what could potentially happen down the road. And if you can pair it with other metrics and other things that you can look at, it becomes far more valuable. Because then you know where that money might land. You might know where it's going to find a home based off of the market conditions. And that's exactly what we do on this channel. And if that's something that you guys are interested in, in monitoring how these money flows and how things are rotating between things using ratios, subscribe to the channel. And give me a thumbs up if you like this content. Thanks for listening. This is Finding Value.